The city's central districts are adorned with the centuries-old regalia of power. Siska's eye traces the festooned and crested townhouse facades worn with time. She regards the Imperial Embassy's crumbling cornices and ledges like a palm reader divining the city's future from its cracks and fissures. What's your name, little girl? Daddy said we are going on holiday. To the beach. Her name is Eva. Eva, will you stay close to me? I'm going to help you and your daddy go on holiday, but you have to promise to be good. Is that okay? I think I lost my toy. Wilt, I'll keep an eye on her. The overnight sleeper to Trias leaves in two hours. Let's get going. What about the identity papers? They'll check us on the train before we cross the border. We'll get some papers from Garentz. He runs a small printing press in the shopping arcade, but his main work is doctoring checks and ID cards. Can we trust him? As much as you'd trust a hungry vulture, but we don't have much choice. Local traders barter household essentials and basic foodstuffs. A shaving mirror gets you five onions. A sack of potatoes could command as much as a blanket or warm coat. The soot-caked print shop window obscures the press rhythmically at work inside, where the patron secures a jeweler's loop over his left eye. To the Bildenstrasse Press. What a lovely couple you two make. Experience meets youth. How charming. I bet you're here for wedding invitations. No time to waste, Garentz. Drop the act. You know why we're here. Two sets of ID papers within an hour. Oh, my friend Wilt. I didn't recognize you for a moment. I'd love to help. I won't even take a single shilling from you. Hurry up, Garantz. I don't need the full story. Tell me what you want in return and let's get this done. 
As well as running the art academy across the square, my neighbor, Herr Grunwald, makes a tidy sum by managing the art collections of Vienna's rich and powerful. These people spend a fortune trading unique treasures and rely on Grunwald's expertise for guidance. It's not yet clear to me where you or I fit into this. Well, the problem for Grunwald's clients is that he is not as trustworthy as he seems. He is fond of passing on forgeries as high-value pieces to his clients, supported by fake authenticity documents. Which you produced for him. Correct. And then guess what happened? The cheating fraudster Grunwald decided not to pay the poor forger Gerentz. And now I need to settle this liar's dispute. You guessed it. I want you to retrieve my forged certificates. I'll then tell Grunwald the price has now doubled. You're not slow to exploit an opportunity to make money, are you, Gerentz? A man is a reflection of his times. Is it not so, Wilt? Anyway, bring me these items and you'll have your IDs. Siska, Ignez, stay here with Eva. I'll go and collect the certificates. If I'm not back in an hour, then you're on your own.
Wilt rifles through the mess of letters and papers. In the lower drawer of the desk, he uncovers a bundle of thick cards adorned with wax seals and gold leaf bound in a silk ribbon. Wilt quickly scans one of the certificates before stuffing the sheaf into his pocket. Here's your payment, Gorenz. Wilt hands over the certificates. Gorenz tucks them into his pocket in exchange for the forged identity cards, each decorated with a flawless replica of the official Imperial seal required for border crossings. How do you know Grunwald won't simply go to another forger? There is nobody else within 200 kilometers of Vienna who can do what I do. Grunwald? He's a greedy man. He'll never hold a grudge if it costs him money. You're gambling on his greed outweighing his pride. Greed outweighs everything, Wills. Thanks for the psychology lesson. We need to get going. Ignace and Eva will need two tickets for their journey. Siska, can I leave this to you and your nimble fingers? No problem. I'll go ahead and find some tickets. There must be some unguarded pockets in the train station. Meet me on the departure platform afterwards. What is it? They'll never Do win. Do you mind? We must not quit!
deserves a huge. Farewell, Ignace. Good luck in Trieste. Thank you. You weren't the worst human being I've ever come across. You probably don't deserve what Randane did to you. Or have planned. I promised that if you helped me, I'd tell you what I knew. If you want to learn more, go and visit the old Zeppelin factory south of the river. They were recently sold for a pittance to an investor representing Rendain in a deal I was forced to approve. You can get there easily. Most of the underground trains stop in that area. Thanks, Ignaz. Maybe steer clear of politics in the future? Doesn't seem to have done much for your soul here in Vienna. I just want to forget it all. Three years of misery, always afraid. At least I still have Eva. In Trieste, we can start again. That's all I want. You and every other bag of bones on this planet wants another go around. And even if you had it, even if you had another 50 rolls of the dice, you'd still end up the shivering shell of a man that stands before us now. You are not exactly sentimental, are you? I don't expect much from people, and they still find ways to disappoint. I pity you, Wilt. Ignaz and Eva are already seated as the carriage slips out of the terminal. Siska's voice is buried by the noise of the locomotive.
What is it? What is it? They'll never win. We can take the underground train to the industrial zone near the Zeppelin factories. We'll be there in an hour. Sounds like you'll have a lot of fun. You're not coming? This isn't a hobby for me, Siska. If you want to hire me, then pay me. Or else, good luck to you. Try Arno if you want to volunteer. He's always desperate for a chance to clear his conscience. Problem is, whatever he does, it's never enough. I didn't much enjoy the last war I fought in, and I'm not eager to sign up for another. Siska watches intently as Wilt maneuvers through the crowd. She fidgets with the button of her worn jacket waiting for him to change his mind to turn around and re-emerge from the anonymous masses. Siska learned a long time ago that waiting for heroes would never change anything. And she was cross with herself for having once more entertained such folly. Heroes were for children's stories. In life, she'd met only those who cared more and those who cared less. The locomotive steam whistle is deafening. Siska buttons her coat and slips off towards the freight terminal. Do you mind? <laughs>